Okay, so welcome to this next video on functional analysis. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with our discussion of convergence of sequences and we're going to look at another uh, way of looking at the definition of the convergence of a sequence. So uh, just to remind you, this is the setup we have. We have a metric space, um, so we have a set X and a metric on that set uh, which we will abbreviate by little d. So uh, in this set uh, you have uh, a bunch of elements, so let's say little x and little y, and between any two elements uh, we have ascribed a distance between those two elements, so uh, th there is meaning given to uh, the uh, distance between those two, so there is some real number ascribed to this distance between those two points. Okay, uh, and uh, we said that if you take a sequence in uh, this metric space, so a sequence is some uh, function mapping the natural numbers into the metric space, so to every natural number, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, etc., and it goes on, you ascribe an element in the metric space. So you ascribe, uh, let's say, x1 to 1, uh, you ascribe x2 to 2, x3 to 3, etc., x4 to 4, and it goes on. Uh, so we can draw these little points out, x1, x2, and they don't necessarily need to be distinct. x2 might be the same point in the metric space as x3, uh, but it's still it's still a mapping. It doesn't necessarily need to be a one-to-one -one mapping, this uh, sequence. Uh, but I won't draw it like that, because it's a bit difficult to draw it like that. So it goes on and on and on, and basically we defined the notion of a convergent sequence. Uh, we said that this sequence was going to be convergent, this sequence uh, which you might like to write x x is equal to x1, x2, x3, etc. We said that this sequence is convergent if, convergent if, if for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, uh, that implies that the distance between x little n and um, oh well I should have said yes oh dear uh, convergent implies that there exists let's say uh, um, what should I call it an L which is an element of the metric space so there exists a point in the metric space such that for all such that I'll put there for all epsilon greater than zero there exists an n uh, big N, which is an element of the natural numbers such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the distance between xn and L is less than epsilon. So the definition is this. Uh, if we look at this picture up here, in fact I'll draw another picture. So if we've got a sequence like this and it's getting closer and closer and closer to something, uh, then that's the intuitive sense of what it means to converge. And basically that this is just the formalization of that uh, intuitive notion that there is some point L which is in the metric space, uh, such that if you take a, uh, such that if you take any ball, let's say of size epsilon, any open ball, so I should draw it with hash signs, take any open ball of around L of size epsilon, so you can let epsilon be anything you like, and basically I will be able to find you a point, a big N in the sequence, so some X big N in the sequence, such that for that term, and for all terms beyond that, so x big n plus 1, x big n plus 2, etc. In fact, any little n you pick, uh, you can take uh, the point in the sequence x little n, such that little n is greater than or equal to big n. All of those have a distance away from L less than epsilon, i.e. they are within this ball. So there is a point in the sequence after which that point and all of the points following it are within this ball of size epsilon. And obviously this point, big N, this big N, will depend on epsilon. There's not just one big N that works for any epsilon. No, 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 that's not the definition. The definition is saying that if I give you an epsilon, you can find me a big N, uh, that there exists 
such a big N. It doesn't say that this big N is fixed for any epsilon, so uh, often you'll see people write this big N as a function of epsilon. Okay, so if I give you an epsilon, for instance, 0 0.5, you would be able to find me a big N that corresponds to that. If I give you an epsilon 0 0.01, you'd find a different big N. It would have to be a bigger big N, potentially. It might be the same one. You might get lucky, and it might turn out that all of those points uh, from big N onwards are within 0 0.01. Uh, uh, distance of the limit, and that might actually be the first point in which they are all 0 0.5 distance within the limit, in which case obviously the big ends would be the same, uh, but in general they won't be the same, they don't, and they don't need to be the same for the de a definition to work. So there is another way of viewing this definition, and this is the other way that you can view it. You can say uh, that a sequence a sequence xn, and that's what well, we let's say x, which is equal to x1, x2, x3, etc., is going to converge to a limit L, converges to L, converges to L, which is an element of the metric space, if the limit as n approaches infinity of another sequence, the distance between xn and L, converges to zero. So basically, what we're doing is we are reducing the question of sequences in arbitrary metric spaces to the question of sequences of real numbers. You see, for this sequence x over here, I can make you a corresponding sequence. So let me show you. So if I have this sequence x here, which is x1, x2, x3, x4, etc., and it goes on and on and on. Uh, in fact, let me just put a few more in. x5, x6, and it goes on. Okay. I can build you another sequence that corresponds to this. I can build you a new sequence. Let's call it, uh, let's just, what should we call it? Uh, let's just call it the sequence Y, in fact, not Y. Let's call it the sequence S for sequence. Uh, and I can build it as the distance between X1 and L, the distance between X2 and L, the distance between X3 and L, the distance between X4 and L, and etc. You can go on. So this term corresponds obviously to this one, this term corresponds to this one, this term corresponds to this one, and this term corresponds to this one. That's what I mean by saying that we can build a corresponding sequence. Now this sequence is a sequence of real numbers, sequence of, uh, of more than that, we can say it's of non-negative real numbers. Non-negative real numbers. Now, we are assuming we know real analysis, so we know what it means for a sequence of real numbers to converge. So, we can say uh, that this sequence here, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, which is a sequence in the abstract metric space, uh, is going to converge in the metric space if this sequence converges to zero. So basically, we can reduce the question of whether this converges to build this new sequence, this sequence of real numbers, and ask whether this sequence converges to zero. Now why? Why does uh, this sequence converging to, let's say, a limit L, imply that this sequence will converge to zero? And conversely, why does this sequence converging to zero imply that it satisfies uh, our definition of converging to L? So we've already got a definition of what it means uh, to converge in a metric space. What I'm now going to prove to you is that this definition, this definition of limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between xn and L, which is this sequence here, the limit of this sequence being equal to zero, that in, that's equivalent to our definition, basically. If this is satisfied, uh, then the sequence converges to this limit L, basically. So it's another definition, a second definition. In some ways, you might prefer this definition, you might prefer the other one. In my opinion, the other one's slightly more intuitive, but this one comes pretty quickly. Okay, so um, let's go, uh, firstly, from the original definition we had to this definition. Okay, uh, so... Uh, we have, um, we ha let's, uh, let's assume that we have a sequence which converges according to our initial definition in this abstract metric space. So that means we have some sequence x which is equal to x1, x2, x3, x4, etc. And uh, we are going to, and it's going to converge on the limit L. So the limit of the sequence xn as n approaches infinity is equal to L. Now that means that for all the epsilon greater than zero, uh, 
there exists a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the distance between xn and, um, and uh, that, what is it, distance between xn and L can be made less than epsilon. Okay, uh, so uh, now what we're asking is, um, now if this, if what we want to see is how this corresponds to this, but basically, if we now look at the uh, sequence x, distance between x1 and L, which is this other sequence, so we're looking at now our second definition, then we've got the distance between x2 and L, uh, the distance between x3 and L, etc., the distance between x4 and L. Well, what this definition tells me is that I can find you an n, I can go along this further enough, I can go along to some uh, distance between x, big N, and L, and basically for that term and all terms beyond that, uh, this distance will be less than, uh, this, um, this um, well, the distance between x, N, and L, x, big N, and L, if, if little n is greater than or equal to big N, uh, for all of the terms beyond here, this number is going to be less than epsilon. Now, that is the same as the definition that, it, that this sequence converges on zero in the real line. And let me show you why. Because the definition of convergence in the real line, if we just remind ourselves of that, uh, if we've got a sequence of real numbers, then the definition of, let's say, limit as n approaches infinity of Sn being equal to some limit, let's say, S, Okay, that means in the real numbers, that means for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists, again, a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that uh, for all uh, little n, which is greater than or equal to big N, it implies, uh, well, for all of the, uh, if, well, I should put, usually I put if there, if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that uh, the modulus of Sn minus S is less than epsilon. Right, so what we are saying is I can, I'm can. i saying now that I can get the distance between x, n, and l less than epsilon by making big N big enough, okay? Uh, so, uh, this, um, this here is our sequence here, so what we've basically got is we could view this as the modulus of the distance between x, n, and l minus zero being less than epsilon, because these are all non-negative real numbers. So, when I take away zero, I obviously still get the same number, and when I take the modulus, that doesn't change it, so this is effectively the same statement that the distance between xn and l is less than epsilon. So basically, this is the statement that this sequence, distance xn, uh, the distance between xn and l, is converging to zero, the equivalent limit is zero. Uh, so, basically, if this, uh, if this statement here is true, that um, for uh, whatever epsilon you give me, I can find your point in the sequence after which all the points, that point and all points afterwards, are within that, uh, are within, uh, that distance of the limit l, then it's equivalent to saying that this uh, sequence of distances between each term of the sequence and the limit L is converging to zero. So that's the proof that way. Uh, now let's prove it in the other way. Let's prove that if we have uh, if we have this statement, if we have that the limit the limit as um, in fact let's get another piece of paper. Okay. So if we have the other statement, if we have the statement that the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between xn and l is converging to zero. So we know that that limit is zero. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us that for all epsilon greater than zero, uh, there exists a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n, if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the modulus of the distance between xn and l uh, at minus zero, the modulus of this the, of the sequence minus the limit um, is less than epsilon. Now, again, this says if we subtract off zero, you just get the distance between xn and l, and then the distance between xn and l is a non-negative number, so if you take the modulus of it, it is just equal to the distance between xn and l. So we get that the distance between xn and l uh, is going to be less than epsilon if 
uh, big n, uh, sorry, if little n is greater than or equal to big N. And that's exactly what we wanted uh, for our definition of limit in an abstract metric space. Because our definition of limit in an abstract metric space said, I should be able to find you a big N uh, in terms of this sequence here. So let's just write it out, x1, x2, da, 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 all the way up to x big N. I should be able to find you some big N such that for that term and for all terms after that, the distance between it and the limit is less than epsilon, and that's exactly what I found you. I'm saying just use the big N that we had from uh, from the definition that this limit was equal to zero. That is why those two definitions are utterly equivalent. So this is just another way of viewing uh, the definition of uh, the limit of a sequence in an abstract metric space.